It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the AFC South. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's all up next. With its distinctive swimming pools in the upper deck, there's a look inside Everbank Stadium here in Duval County, Florida. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. And meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air, so people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. The punter Logan Cook set to start the proceedings and we are underway here in Jacksonville. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So a new face at quarterback for the Titans in 2023. It's the 24-year-old rookie out of Kentucky, Charles, Will Levis. As if this motivated young man needed an extra chip on his shoulder. He certainly got one more when he slipped to the second round of this year's draft. This, after he was discussed, as a possible top five pick. As he likes to tell everyone, I've got a cannon for an arm, and I love to show it off. Levis will look to throw on the first play from scrimmage. That's complete to Traylon Burks. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A good start. One play, 10 yards. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. First and 10. Here's Levis. He gets it to Burks again. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. Play action now. Levis. Open man, Westbrook Aquino. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A game there of 30 big ones. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. The NFL's second leading rusher in 2022. Here's Derrick Henry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. So from the 22, here's second and two. Levis now off of play action. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Foyer Aluakon. They'll talk about a rhythm breaker right there. They've been moving the ball well. Drive it started beautifully. That one's going to hurt. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Now Levis. They set up the screen for Henry. 
breaks through the contact. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well, like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Derrick Henry, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Titans will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete bet, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Nick Folk for the point after. And this is good. Our score, 7-0 Tennessee. So that drives seven plays in length. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence's so many tabs to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll run with ETN. Nice little juke. And a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. But Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. ETN once more. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked out before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Play action. It's Lawrence. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Oh 
Seventh play in this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. You know, in boxing, they throw in the towel. In this case, you just kind of wave the white flag, and you think to yourself, if he can just get past that initial wave, he's got a chance to get free. But that screen, it was going nowhere from the start. It forces a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 nothing lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. First and ten, it's Levis. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Off the play fake, Levis. Too far in front, he couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Levis sets up to throw here. He stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now ETN to start the drive. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Now a third and six. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And the pass is intercepted. He was looking for Ingram. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback to just throw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game telling all their teammates, maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. Unfortunately here, he couldn't make it into the end zone. Oh, 
And they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Levis to throw off play action. And his throw here is incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Back to throw, it's Levis. Oh, and that is incomplete. Bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. This a 43-yard attempt. And Folk's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They'll look to get something started. They need to, down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now a second and 10. On the counter, ETN. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. But well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the mesh is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Throwing quickly, this is caught by Kirk. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. From midfield now, Lawrence. And one more time, here's Kirk. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because no short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. 
Looking to throw, Lawrence. And that will be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Tennessee offense set to go again. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And yeah, not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Second and nine. Levis to throw it. Throw here, taken in by Wiley, the tight end. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well, see if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. On second down, here's Henry. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Levis on third down. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Devon Hamilton in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And, yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. Quarter now, Titans in possession of the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And now out come the Jags. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Brought down on the play by Amani Hooker. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. 
On second down, Lawrence. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Christian Kirk, 62 yards. And the Jaguars are back within a score. Maybe that is the boost that this offense needed. They've done nothing the entire half, but out of the blue comes this big shot here. You're exactly right. Like a dunk in basketball, like a home run in baseball, maybe a solo shot. Sometimes you need that big play to get things ignited. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. That he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Now these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Adam Gatsis in there to get him. It's a loss of five. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. On the return, here's Agnew. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Jags and Christian Kirk making their way back out on offense. He's up near 100 yards now here in the second quarter, but his team's down. Through no fault of his own. I mean, what a nice game he's having so far. They've got to keep finding ways to get him the football. Don't get away from that. Figure out where things are going wrong with the rest of the team. They'll be hoping to hit that 100-yard mark on this drive. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way down to the 35. 79 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Terrific run from one of the fastest backs in the game today. A guy who keeps defensive coordinators up at night, no doubt. Remember when we were meeting with the D coordinator before the game and all he talked about was run fits, making sure our guys were in the right place so there were no creases? They missed their fits, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> there was no fit there. The only fit was at the end when he threw his headset down after that big run. On first down, Lawrence. And his throw is incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. Second and ten. Straight ahead, ETN. 
And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans 27. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Third and two, now Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Second and 10 now, it's Lawrence. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. On third down, Lawrence. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. In the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. McManus's point after is good. And the lead is now 14 to 10. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now? is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They begin with Henry. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Here's Levis. Open man, Westbrook Aquino. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Levis back to throw. Being chased out left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Inside handoff, Henry. Henry all alone. 
Inside the 10. And he'll finally be taken down at the two-yard line. 84 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. So all the way down close to the goal line, good blocking up front, helped to spring him. When this drive is over, he's got to get to the bench and send Kumbaya with the offensive line, doesn't he? Big time openings for him, gets him all the way down to the two yard line. Let's see if they can pound it in. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Now Levis. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Levis. Nick Westbrook Akine, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Titans have regained the lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Jaguars again ready to take over on offense. They came out not so hot. The first quarter, they were sputtering a little bit, but they seem to have stayed the course and really righted the ship here in the second. Well, let's face it, all the preparation that goes into getting ready for a game all the scouting reports, the practice, the repetition. Sometimes you hit a little bit of a lull to start things off. Maybe you get a little flat, but if you put in that time, you put in that effort, it can come back to you, and that's what we're seeing so far. Now can they keep that momentum going? And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Lawrence. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. It's Roger McCreary with a pick. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. We don't see this often. A quarterback of his caliber, two first-half interceptions. It's absolutely surprising because it happens so rarely. You're searching for what reason, what's going on out there. It's not just maybe the defense is playing well. Is his horoscope off? His biorhythms? What is it? You went horoscope on us, David. Well, I was thinking maybe REM sleep was off. I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> Anything, right? On first down, Levis. His throw incomplete. That incompletion certainly slows things down a little bit and brings up a very important call for second and long. What do you do? Run and try and get some yardage and make it third and manageable? Or challenge the coverage again, hoping for a bigger gain? Here's second and ten. Levis looking to throw. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and 10. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, 
They run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. That is caught, and he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. That third down conversion, good for 23. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up, they know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. That's to the tight end, Wiley. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. This second and four. Well, they go play action. Here's Levis. Tennessee touchdown. Will Levis scampering home from 19 yards out. And the Titans are able to stretch out their lead. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Full connects on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he returns this to the 22. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 22. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. ETN up the middle. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and nine. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. Fielded at about the 28. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And it'll be Titan football. Tennessee offense set to go again. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. 
To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain, second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Levis sets up to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They'll come up now third and three. Back to throw, it's Levis. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit, they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short, so that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Off the play fake, Levis. And that's complete to Westbrook Akine. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. 23 yards the pick up there. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Levis to throw it. Throw here, take it in by Wiley, the tight end. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there. and They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Levis out of the shotgun now. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And the Titans are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. They'll throw it again with Levis. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there because there's a side of relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. Henry. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. The Jaguars is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one.
Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. Folk's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first-half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Jags are going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. On first down, Lawrence. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. On third down, here's ETN. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down, but guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put them behind the eight ball. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Derrick Henry, as he normally does, making his impact felt in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. On well, the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive, but get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Lawrence will throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. Now inside the 25, Travis Etienne, touchdown Jaguars! Travis Etienne, 74 yards! And the Jaguars come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead will shrink to six. To the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team you've got to be careful right here 10th carry now for Derrick Henry and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. he'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break nice play there and this D is fired up so after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Here's Levis. And he's got his big tight end here. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. He stiff arms him. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 94 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. 
From the 42-yard line, here's second down and one. They'll run it again with Henry. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Second down, here's Levis. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And the Titans are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. The time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Levis back to throw. Got a man and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Nick Westbrook Akine with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And they are able to add on to their advantage. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead is going to stay right where it is. I have to admit, I love the excitement of the two-point try. You know, to see what's going to happen, and, and it happens pretty quickly, doesn't it? You get an answer, and in this case, it was unsuccessful for the guys trying it. Completely unrelated. I just realized that I stole both your pins in this last half of the game. <laughs> My bad, partner. Hey, hey that's okay. Well, they, and, and just in the time they went for two. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. He has been a factor in a multitude of ways. Over 100 yards rushing. He's approaching that number in the receiving category, too. And you know why I've always respected guys who can have these types of games? As a runner, you're going through a pile. People are raking at the football all the time. Your hands take a beating, okay? And to be able to still go out and catch the football in open field after going through that, that guy's dynamite. He's been dynamite in this game so far. We'll see defensively if they have an answer because they need to come up with something. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that will bring up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. 
Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. And he goes out right around the 39. Here now, second and four. Lawrence going to throw again. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Caleb Farley. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys have been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Now we're at the 41, second and nine. Levis looking to throw. And he gets it down to the 32. Give him nine yards on the scramble there, but it does leave him still a few inches shy with third down looming. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Here comes third and the length of the football. Little bootleg here, Levis. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Titans first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Out to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. That's Foley Fadukasi who got in there and finished off the play. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back. But every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Draw play, this is Henry. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. Give him nine on the carry, but it's not enough, and it'll be fourth down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Folks' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. 
So the defense able to force the interception and the offense working their way into field goal range and able to get three out of it. Yeah, and give them credit for that. They took the ball, maneuvered it downfield, and while they couldn't get exactly what they wanted, which was a touchdown, they did get three points out of it. So they paid off what the defense gave them. Both sides would be thrilled with that. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Christian Kirk and company heading back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 24. Jones now in motion left. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. On second down, ETN once more. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Oftentimes, we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. On first and 10, it's ETN. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. 132 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. On second down, ETN once more. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Play action. It's Lawrence. He completes it to Ridley. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. They go play action with Lawrence. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. 
So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now Lawrence. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And to throw again is Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. That was a heck of an effort to stop him just short of the marker, but now they're going to need another big play on fourth down on defense, I believe, because offensively, they went from third and long to now it's a ghost situation here on fourth and inches. Going for it, here's ETN. zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Jaguars are able to get a score back in the final stages of this third quarter. So they only needed a couple of feet there on fourth down, but they got more than that and then some as he takes this into the end zone. And I love your description right there, right? Fourth and short. They got that, no problem. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it. Finish it off in the end zone, touchdown. Everyone goes away happy on that one. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Back to throw. It's Levis. Throw here. Taken in by Wiley. The tight end. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. First down. Titans gain of 12. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back now in Jacksonville. It's the Titans, they've got the football. They'll be looking to extend their lead here as we begin the fourth quarter. To about the 40-yard line. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Henry again on second down. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm got is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. 
Henry will get it. He's been busy today. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. The Titans on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is going to be third and 13. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. One thing you have to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. So here's Nick Folk in an important spot. This to make it a two-score game. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And this will stay a one-score game as the lead holds at eight. Well, that one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10. At the 45. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Open man is Kirk, complete. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and a couple. Here's a give to ETN. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Here comes third and about a foot. Here's Lawrence. Oh, they would have gotten a conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Now Lawrence to throw. Look at the big man rumble. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. Give him 32 on the play. <laughs> this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defenses have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. A handoff for ETN. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Now Lawrence to throw on second down. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, 
But it's incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage. Especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Calvin Ridley. A five-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They've still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. So here we go now as the Jaguars will go for two. Lawrence going to look to throw for it. That's caught. But he is not going to make it. It's a big play by the defense, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. to the touchdown cook now to kick this one away and good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20 and here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field and they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score but bottom line they are still on top with the football and a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position a First and ten, here's Levis. It's complete to Hopkins. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball on the 27, here's second and a yard. A shotgun hand off to Henry. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful. There he goes, right side. Big strides, look at him go. Touchdown, Titans. Josh Wiley, 70 yards. And the Titans use the big play to extend their fourth quarter lead. Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big-time moments happen for this team. Extra point up and good by Folk, and that makes this a nine-point game. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. 
Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is caught. It's Ridley. Shreds him with a stiff arm. A big play there on the catch and run. 56 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Looking to throw Lawrence. That's complete to his tight end, Farrell. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Second down and a yard. Here's Lawrence to throw. Open man right side is Ingram. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, in the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it, for them to get downfield that quickly? And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. The slot man in motion right, and they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep, and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Third and goal. And keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Lawrence will throw. That one thrown away from the pocket. And the officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. The kick by McManus is good, and that'll move him back within six now. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Working from the gun, here's Levis. This will go to Henry out wide. 
And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. They run on first down with Henry, but the hole evaporates quickly as he'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. In motion right goes Hopkins. Second down, they go again with Henry. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. As to you said big third down, I'd put the word big in capital letters here. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Levis back to throw. Out route, and this is Henry with a catch. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get through and protect the ball. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. Here's Levis. And he is going to have a Titans first down, and that should just about do it. And they will take a knee here. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Henry running right. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. So 
So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout, but instead they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. Yeah, Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. In this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that'll just about do it.